one or does it matter? Go ahead. Uh, I'm Kim West. Thanks for coming. This is, this is, uh, this is cool. I, I, like, I like doing this stuff. Um, I've been asked to talk about uh, bicycling, so I brought a visual aid um, with a bicycle. And, um, you know, it, I, think, I think Kelsey was talking about maybe wanting to uh, cover uh, getting started or, or whatever, and, and I can do that. And at any time, if you have any questions or if you can't hear me how, or anything like that, feel free to, to shout out. Um, I've just made some brief notes. Uh, about that, and, and uh, I probably don't pay much attention to them. So, and we've got till 12:45, so I'll try to be mindful of that. Um, it occurred to me on the way out, and, and, and that's how I, I have always done all my major problem solving: is just getting on the bike and riding. And, and like I said, the little thing in the paper, thank you to Lauren Register for making that handy. So I do have a handout. You know, if you don't know the answer, you haven't ridden long enough. And, and it, it, it came to me that realization did when I was. Uh, I was born in a bicycle shop. That's what I was going to say. Born in a bicycle <laughs> shop in 1953, and and uh, it's the modern update of the, of the log cabin. But but when I when I got to law school and was uh, doing trials and all this kind of stuff, I would I would come to these you know situations where I've got a witness or I've got a piece of evidence or I've got a you know whatever some sort of problem that I just don't know what to do. And, and the more you think about it, the more obscure and obtuse it becomes. Yeah, it's time for a bike ride. You know, so you get on your bike and you just ride. And you know, I mean, you know how it works. It just it. You don't have to go hard, but it's just so therapeutic. It's just, oh God, it's so cleansing. So like, uh, and the longer you ride, the more the more cleansed you become, and then you get back, you don't think about anything. Uh, and you come back, and all of a sudden the answer is resolved. And uh, so that's what cycling is for me. And and so I've been doing that kind of uh, you know, self self uh, medicating uh, uh, for years, um, but. So cycling, it's, it's all good for you here. That, that's why you're here today. I think um, you, you've made some sort of determination that at least there's some interest in it, or else you're here for the three drawings. But, um, <laughs> so I'm going to cover you know, how to assess your general wellness uh, or fitness level. And then if you, if you and, and that's just, well, you know, how are you to go to a doc? And they say to do that, and that's all right. But most of you look like you're real, you know, basically healthy. So don't be afraid to hop on a bike. Anybody can do it. Um, but the, the thing that I'll hopefully will remember to repeat over and over again is, is that it's supposed to be fun. It's always supposed to be fun. And when I was teaching spin classes, of all things, uh, I told people I wanted to be safe and have a good time. And then thirdly, worry about getting a good workout. Because if you're not having a good time or you're not being safe, workouts are going to be damned anyway. Right? So, um, so always, always have it in your mind that you're doing this to have fun. And you will. It doesn't matter whether it's raining or snowing or whether you're working your butt off. You know, we had races this weekend, and, and uh, uh, I had a friend who was a, a category, who was a teammate, who, uh, a category one, and our team just mopped up in the road race. I talked with him yesterday, and he said he's just unbelievably sore. I said, but it, it occurred to me he didn't get up off his, he, you know, he said I didn't get off my saddle for 72 miles, other than just a couple of times, maybe 10 seconds, just sort of like do a little quick sprint. But it was like 72 miles sit down the whole time. He said, it kind of hurts where I sit. And, and yet, it's a good sensation. So, so always worry about your workout last. Just make sure you're safe and you're, and you're having a good time. And, and it, it, God bless them at the register. They didn't mess it up very much. It, I, I hope that when you read that stuff, it, it comes through. You know, like Dr. Seuss as my, as my business model. It really is. You know. uh, but so once you've determined that you're healthy enough to do that, then it's a matter of, of getting ready to actually ride a bike. Any questions about that, by the way? Then I'll move on to the next chapter. All right. Um, then the next thing is, is you know, selection of a bike and, and, and clothing. And uh, again, when I started teaching, I, and, and I'm amazed, but because it's a wellness center, I couldn't believe that I was actually teaching spin classes. But it turned out to be a good thing for me because it allowed me to work a lot on, on technique and so forth. And I met a lot of people I would never have met otherwise. Um, but but uh, one of the instructors who was an aerobics instructor, and, and as they all were, and then, and then they gradually became cycling instructors, it's like, you know, you're not going to wear army boots to do, you know, aerobics classes. And so why would you want So I'm starting on the one from the feet up. It's really important to get cycling shoes if you're going to ride a bike. Um, because your feet are the one contact other than your butt and your hands. But the most important work contact are your feet. And if you have shoes that, you know, give, like tennis shoes or, or cheap cycling shoes, you're going to pay for it. They're going to be not only are they not as efficient, I'm getting real technical here. Uh, 
you're going to lose a lot of energy and, and you're not going to become as you know, you know, biomechanically efficient. So start off with really, really good shoes. They may cost a little bit more, but you, you, you will be happy in, in, in the long run. Um, also then, fitness. Are you guys going to sleep yet? All right. Um, you can grab a bike, any old bike will do, and, and that's what I did, and I was telling Kelsey, this, this bike is a, I don't know, late, uh, late 60s Schwinn Racer. It started out life as a three-speed, and I found it without a front wheel uh, down in the junk pile uh, two blocks down the street from where I live, and I thought, this thing is perfect. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I took it home and, and you know, got rid of the wheels, um, had a wonderful AM radio, uh, you know, rather than the Walkman, it was like the Walkman of the, uh, the iPod of the day, sitting up here about this big, but unfortunately the top cover was missing, it was all corroded by a nice little bit of you know, technological uh, missing link. But anyway, um, got rid of that stuff <coughs> and rebuilt it. Uh, Steve Fry out at, at Bike World built up these wonderful wheels. I've got some old candy high flange, high flange hubs from the early 70s, about the same vintage, and, and he did some marvelous work on the, uh, on the uh, crank set so I could have a, a a genuine three-piece uh, cotter crank, but I made it into a fixed gear bike. And I ride this thing probably as much as, and maybe not as much as my racing bike, but, but I, an awful lot. And, and you know, got a little BMX saddle, original handlebars to drop them, but, the, but the, the beauty of this thing is that it fits me just like my road bikes, as all your bikes should. Whether you get a hybrid bike, or a mountain bike, or a road bike, or a, an old cruiser, or whatever, you want to find a position that fits and that is comfortable for you. And again, it allows you to be safe so you can see and not fall <coughs> over and also be comfortable and therefore happy. And all these things matter before you start even riding the darn thing because those two things come first. And it does, and I love this thing. I, mean, I, I take it all over the place. Um, and the nice thing about something like this is all you need is a huffy tool. You know, I mean, there's nothing on here that's so fancy you can't fix it with a crescent wrench. So, um, so that's good. So we've got that down. And, and you can go all sorts of places to get fit for your bike. I mean, you can eyeball it um, and, and say, well, all right, that feels comfortable. But it may feel comfortable, but it probably isn't right. It, it probably isn't biomechanically uh, proper for you. And because you're here, you're more concerned about actually being able to get to the third phase, which is getting a good workout. So it's critical for you guys to actually know how to fit a bike and, and, or, or how to know whether or not your bike fits well. And uh, Kelsey used to work at uh, uh, Skunk River Cycles in Ames, which is uh, the child of one of the best shop, bike shops I've ever been around in, Michael Cyclery. And, and Michael Fatkid is the guy who, when I listed my mentor after my mother, Michael, he was the person who I, I pointed out on one of my email buddies that you know, uh, gave birth to me as a, as a bike racer and a real cyclist. Michael is just this unbelievable uh, inspiration and source of knowledge, and he doesn't get the credit he deserves. And I want that on YouTube as well. Um, <laughs> But, but while I was there, Michael and Ron Ritz did a fit kit for me, and that's where they measure everything. I mean, they, they just, all the units, all the distances, everything. I was laying down on the floor of the old Michael shop and so forth, and they discovered that I had a leg length discrepancy. I've got one, uh, let's get this one, uh, five that's about a centimeter short. As many people do, and it's a significant difference. And so what they did was make accommodations, right? You, know, you could have shims or whatever, but, but instead we just went to a different pedal system that allowed you know, for that to not be an issue. But I've had that, that same piece of paper that Ron filled out for me, I keep in my toolbox, or actually it's in my, it's in my log book I keep with me, because every time I get a new bike, I just measure, 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 and this is what it is. And, and I haven't had to go through that, and I've never had a bike that doesn't fit. Even this thing, you match it up, bike, 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 and they're all the same. The saddle height's the same, and all this kind of nonsense. So those are really critical things, and you can go to any of the bike shops around, any of the reputable bike shops around, and be able to either fit you themselves, or point you to somebody who can do that. And so when you're, whether you're in a spin class or getting a bike or racing or anything in between, it's, you know, you're not going to buy shoes that don't fit. You're not going to sit behind a car without adjusting the seat and mirrors and all that kind of stuff. Why in the world would you hop on a bike and not do the same thing? So those are, those are really, really critical things. And, oh, and by the way, I'll put a plug in for Bike Collective, which is, yeah, still there, uh, which is a place where you can get bikes like this downtown. It's a nonprofit. We take old bikes and turn them into new bikes, basically. And, and uh, uh, we've just been around since, we're not even officially open yet, but we are, we are servicing all sorts of people. So if you're looking for a bike and you don't want to shell out big bucks and, and you decide, like our logo says, an old bike is a good friend, 
Come on down. All right, check that place out because you can get a, a sweet little bike for under 100 bucks. That will take everything.